Hi guys, I am going to attempt to make an altered bottle um, from, from beginning all the way to the end. I'm not really sure how long it's going to take me to do it. I'm going to try to do it um, not, not quickly because whenever I usually make a bottle, it usually takes me, you know, several hours to do it. <clears throat> Luckily, I have a way to edit my video so you guys aren't going to see the long drawn out process. I'm hoping to be able to do this in steps because I don't want to put anyone to sleep. Um, you know, the process to make these bottles is kind of long and drawn out. And I just, I don't, I want to avoid that because it's just, you know what I mean? So <clears throat> for most of the video, most of the videos, Lord have mercy. Let me just start over. Um, for most of the bottles that I do, most of my stuff is hand painted onto the bottles. Um, for this one, we're going to work with some Mod Podge. I just think that it's easier. A lot of people, um, can draw and some people are not, you know, very good at drawing and I want to be able to reach out to both sides of the table. So what I did is I kind of just sketched this, this girl out really quick. I love it because it's got the backwards view. There's no face to it and it didn't take as long to, you know, sketch out. Um, the ballerina feet that you see here, this is just some of the graphics that I have. Um, real simple, it's just printed out onto some paper. Uh, this is acid free, just acid free paper. I can't tell you what gauge the paper is or the weight, not gauge, but weight. But um, just I'm trying to make it as simple as I can uh, for anyone that's not really into drawing. So the theme I'm going to go for is going to be a ballerina theme. Um, pink with some laces and blah, 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 all of that good stuff. So the first thing that I do is I figure out what kind of art I'm going to do. And then I figure out what kind of bottle I'm going to use. Um, I had first attempted to use this Crown Royal bottle, which you can see it's already painted in white chalk paint. The bottom is not done yet. Normally I do paint the bottom. Um, but then I realized that the images are going to be too, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're going to be too big. They're going to be too big for this bottle. So I'm not going to do that. I actually have this other bottle. You can get this bottle at Dollar Tree. Um, this bottle is kind of shot out, but I love the shape of it and it's going to be covered up in paint and you're not going to see all of that on the inside of it anyways. So I like a flat surface. This bottle would be excellent for me to hand paint on, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it really simple. So the first thing that I do, um, like I said, I figure out the art, I figure out the theme, then I find my bottle. This bottle has a little bit of residue on the outside of it, as you can see. So you want to, the first thing you always want to do, um, you want to work with chalk paint for glass. It's the best paint that I have found. Um, whether you're going to Mod Podge it onto something or you're going to hand paint it or whatever, chalk paint for glass seems to me to work the best. Uh, it kind of gives it a surface. So, and you guys have seen this in other videos, I always use the chalk finish paint for glass from Hobby Lobby. I have not seen this paint anywhere else other than Hobby Lobby. I don't really shop at Michael's, but this is the one that I use. So I start off before I even try to put the paint on the bottle. I want to see if I can pan up a little bit here. Let me get the entire little dewy here. There we go. Let's see if we can go this way. Hold on one second, guys. All right. Anyhow, this is probably the best view we're going to get. So the first thing you want to do, I always keep all of my old washcloths. Um, that we don't really use like in the bathroom anymore. I, I don't throw them out. I use them in here. So get myself situated here. So the first thing that I do is I want to get alcohol and I want to clean this bottle off completely. Um, this little thing right here holds the alcohol. I think I did this in a Dollar Tree haul video. You can pick this little little bottle up at um, Dollar Tree for a dollar. A, a dollar. A dollar. You can pick it up and um, it's got the little thing on there. You just kind of press it down just like the ones you use in the doctor's office or whatever. And I find that it's a lot easier than using the spray as I have in the past. I'm going to wet my cloth down and I'm just going to clean the bottle off. We want to get all the oil from our fingers off of it. We want to get all of the dirt off of it. Anything. This bottle has been stored out in my shed. So um, I avoid trying to wash the inside of the bottle out for one reason. I don't want mold to grow in it. And even if I put a lid on here, I still don't want mold to grow in it. So I want to clean the bottle off really, really good. Make sure there's nothing um, from my fingers on here. Now I know when you start to paint the bottle, you're going to be touching it. Um, 
I haven't had any problems with it, but if you want to put on a, like a pair of gloves or something, you can, like latex gloves or any of that, you can. I just try to get, get it all washed off, okay? You can do all of this beforehand. You don't have to do it. I'm just giving you steps right now. Normally, I don't go through all of this. I usually have my bottle clean, okay? So I get all of it wiped off. Alcohol evaporates, so you don't have to worry about drying it. And then I get my brushes. <clears throat> I have all different size brushes. I always have paint brushes on one side of me when I'm working. <clears throat> I don't know why my throat is so scratchy tonight. I don't like it. So, and then I just figure out um, what color paint I'm going to use. Usually I'm going to start off with a white base paint. I use all these little balls like this all the time for paint. Um, they come in like in the kitchen and uh, for you to store food, but these are just too small. So I just put my paint in here and I just cover the entire bottle. Now I cover it. It's going to end up with this dry kind of, do you guys hear that scratchiness? That's what we want. We want that. This is the base. Okay. So then I just cover the entire bottle. And because I'm going to do this one in white, it's probably going to take several coats. So I'm going to just cover the entire bottle. I just paint it like crazy. Um, normally I go very, very slow. I want to make sure that I get good, good coverage on it. The, the best thing about chalk paint is it doesn't take very long to dry. And I don't have to dry it with the heat. Uh, it'll, it'll dry within a few minutes. If you live in an area where um, it's kind of humid or if you're one of those you don't really like, um, like you have the windows open or whatever and you're working on it, humidity will make it dry a lot slower. So um, don't be scared to use the paint either. Like seriously, you want to have good coverage on it. So I just cover the entire bottle and um, make sure that it's all covered. I'm not really trying to do it in any any angle because this is just the top coat. It's kind of like when you apply nail polish, your top coat. I'm sorry, your bottom coat. This is your base coat. So it's been a long day, y'all, for real. So anyhow, I paint and paint and paint and paint and paint and lots of patience and all of that. Cover the entire bottle from top to bottom. Now sometimes I won't paint the whole bottle. Sometimes I'll leave like one side of it open, but this is going to be a real fancy looking one, so we want to cover it. So we get it all painted. And you're going to notice that it looks kind of see-through. Don't stress. It doesn't matter. You're going to cover this up with another paint anyways. You know what I mean? So I got it all mostly covered. Um, the reason that I use the alcohol and not soap and water to remove the oil is it just makes it the paint stick better to the bottle in my opinion. Like you don't have to use alcohol if you have any kind of allergic um, reactions to the alcohol and touching it and all of that or breathing it in. It is a little vaporous, you know, um, then don't. You can use, you know, soap and water. You just want to avoid getting the inside of it wet because I, I tell you from experience, I've done this and I've had my bottles have mold in them and it's really kind of gross. Um, in the beginning. Okay. So what I do after I'm done with this <clears throat> and I get my coat on there, you have it covered completely from side to side. I don't worry about the bottom yet. I leave the bottom alone. Okay. I set this to the side. I want it to dry. So I set that to the side, out of sight, out of mind for a minute. Um, that alcohol is really good about removing that paint from your fingers too. Okay. Then Normally for me, I don't do all of this on the paper. I normally just go to the bottle. But like I said before, I want to show you guys an easy way to do it if you're not really into drawing. Okay. So what I do is I always use my Sharpie marker to kind of detail and define. Normally I would not cut this out. Normally I would leave it straight onto the paper. But, you know, just for time purposes, I just wanted to go ahead and do it. So I just take my Sharpie and I kind of just go in and highlight 
where I want the black to stand out because this is going to get painted. Okay. You guys are probably not going to see this whole part right in here because I do edit a lot. Um, I just don't want to waste time. So I just keep kind of highlighting it in. And I don't know how I had this fold in here. You just keep drawing it in. You start to get, you're starting to be able to see it a little more now, probably, than before. Um, I'm not going to... It's, it's not about being all fancy fancy with me because this is going to be painted and your paint's going to kind of hide a lot of the art. Now, you guys do not have to um, go through this much detail. You don't. I like art and I like to do my own art. If you don't like to do your own art, then print out, you know, print out what you want to have or gift card, not gift cards, but greeting cards are really good for this kind of stuff. You would not believe the amount of art that is in gift cards. You know, um, when I worked at Dollar Tree, the American Greetings Company used to come in and they would stock all of the shelves and they would literally go to the back of the store and they would throw these cards away. Okay. And I was back there one day <clears throat> and the woman told me, I'm like, you guys are just throwing the cards away, really? And she's like, yeah. And I started looking at them, you know, because I was doing graphics and that kind of thing. And I thought, what? So, you know, I kept a bunch of them. And a lot of them, like they will make you tear the back of it off because the barcode is on there. They don't want you to be able to resell it, which that didn't make any sense to me either. But um, yeah, artwork. Greeting cards are excellent. They have all kinds of really pretty stuff on there um, that you can you can alter. You know what I mean? You can scan it in. You can copy it out. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that if you're going to sell your items because it's you know I'm pretty pretty well with the copyright laws and all of that. I wouldn't use someone else's artwork. I can't stand that. I can't stand when people want to use someone else's stuff as their own because it, it just it's just not showing any pride to the other to the original artist you know so not to take you guys all in left field but just one tip like check your greeting cards when you're in the stores especially like dollar general look at the look at the stuff that's on the top of the card on the front of the card <clears throat> you know just a little 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 idea that's all okay so I have it completely covered in now, as you can see it. <coughs> Excuse me. So I have it all co covered in. Now I'm going to paint it. And I pick my colors. This is going to have a lot of pinks and whites in it. So I'm going to use a little bit of pink and a little bit of white. I might do a little bit of yellow. Uh, this is Diva Pink. This is Apple Bear. Apple. I cannot talk tonight, y'all. I don't know what is wrong with me. I think I'm just tired. Apple Barrel Paints from Walmart. This is like 47 cents or 67 cents for this one. This is the Diva Pink color. Yes, I'm going to use chalk paint again on on um, on paper. I love that stuff. And then, of course, I'm going to cut out. I'm going to cut out the the legs. I love these. This is just the cutest thing. I swear. I just I love it. And I actually used this in a layout before. So that's kind of what I do. So I'm going to get my brushes. Um, you do not have to do this step. You can basically just skip all of this and go straight into just printing out what you want. You know what I mean? Or like I said before, using a greeting card. Whatever your heart desires, try it. You know what I mean? This is just what I do. And I don't always do it on paper. I normally just go straight to the bottle with it, but we're going to do a little bit of, uh, you know, Mod Podge and Decapodge and whatever you want to call it. Okay, one step I forgot. When I have it on there like that, I want to get rid of all of my lead. I got me a little pink eraser, and I'll erase all of the lead off of here because I don't want the lead to mix in with my paint. So I get rid of all of that. Okay. 
every single bit of it. We want to get rid of all of the lead. Doesn't matter if you wrinkle it, whatever, because the Mod Podge is going to straighten it back out. Um, when I'm working with Mod Podge, I always try to use like a piece of poster board under it because um, I don't like the little mat underneath here getting really dirty. I'm finding that little booger is getting really hard to clean. I might have to purchase me another one. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm cutting out my image. I've, I've spoke about these scissors before. You can pick these up at Dollar General. It's in the hair, like where the men's shaving and stuff is at. These are men's grooming scissors, y'all. And I'm telling you, they work really good for detail cutting. They're super sharp. Um, and they're only $2. You can get them for 2 bucks in there. So you get this out. Cut it out here. Um, that's pretty good. Well, let me go right here a little bit. And I'm going to keep the flare. And if you guys want this pattern, like I can totally draw this out again. It will it might not be exactly like this. But just let me know and I can upload some of this because this is, this is mine. You know, if you want to use this exact same pattern, just let me know. And I'll definitely make it available on the Facebook group. On the swap it group. Okay, so we got some diva pink, we got some chalk white. I'm gonna go with some a little bit of yellow, which I have to reach over here and grab it because I've got this big box of paint here. I can find my yellow. I believe my daughter has my yellow, which is not cool. My child never brings nothing back to me, she borrows. I don't mind that she borrows it, but she never brings it back. Okay, so we're going to use some glow yellow because I'm not going to even try to uh, venture off away from this camera. I might not make it back. My daughter loves to do crafts too. Um, sometimes she borrows my stuff and forgets to bring it back, which is fine. I love that she likes to do art. I get these little tubs like this at Dollar Tree, and they're really good for paint. You can just... Um, put the paint in there and rinse it out. I like to get all of my colors um, shaken up and in there because I'm going to paint this super duper fast. And then I got some got some chalk paint here. Paint it in here. Okay, now here we go. This is going to be super fast too. Alright, brush. I'm going to start off with a fine brush. Actually, I'm going to go with a little bit of a wider one for her dress. This is going to be painted, but it, it's going to be covered up. I'm going to cover this up with tool, but I'm still going to throw some color in there. So then I basically just start painting. I love to use the scissors um, to hold it down because it's going to move a little bit. So that's just what I do. So then you just paint it out. I'm going to start seeing the color. Um, normally I don't paint this fast, but for time purposes, we're just going to sling it. I try not to get too picky, especially at the bottom when I know that I'm going to be covering it up. And believe it or not, this paint dries pretty fast on paper. By the time I get through with this, that bottle will be dry enough I can work with it. So, other times I like to use the hair dryer because I don't like the heat gun. I actually got a heat gun. I don't like it. I, I just don't like it. The hair dryer works perfectly fine um, for drying paint. It's an old hair dryer anyways. I don't even use it on my noggin anymore. Sometimes I'm darting out the door in the mornings. I don't have time. So I'm painting, 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 painting really quick. Get it all painted. It's kind of like coloring in a book almost. When I paint this stuff freehand, I don't even draw lines. I just, it's crazy, you know. And just keep painting it. Looks a little dark, but that's fine. We're going to lighten it up a little bit. You can use any colors you want to. Like, honestly, there's no pressure here. Let's get it all painted in here. Okay. For her skin tone, we want to go with a lighter color. That's the good thing about acrylic paints. You can actually use it to light it up, lighten it up a little bit more. 
So I'm going to go with this Folk Art brand paint that I have. It's called Champagne. I use that as a skin tone for most of the, the girls that I paint. Looks kind of like an ivory color, if you can see that that's in there. A little ivory color right in here. I'm going to go on over here. So I'm going to do that. Um, make sure your brush is rinsed off really good if you're going to use that same brush because you don't want to have your colors running. Um, I always like to kind of touch the brush. So then I want to do that for her skin tone. I swear I need a bigger workspace. And then I'm just going to paint it in here. It just gives it that little extra, not so um, strong, but it gives it the color. We want the color. So you're going to paint that in. And like I said, guys, you do not have to do it this way. You don't have to go through the art and all of that. Find you an image you like. If you don't draw, find you an image you like and print it out. If you don't like the tone of the colors, see how the colors just ran? I don't like that. Ugh. Let me get a different brush here. I had a feeling it was going to happen that way, but I'll be able to cover it up. Uh, I just broke my paintbrush for real. Did I go it? I only have about 10,000 over here. We're good. If that happens and your color picks up, just go over it. Just go over it. It'll it'll be fine. I don't stress over the small stuff. She's got a little bit of pink on her. She's just got a little bit of pink on her. You know what I mean? So fill it in here. This is really a, a lot faster than I normally paint. Um but just for time purposes, this video might be a lot longer. So, let me see here. Get some white. Get it all painted in. And I tell you guys what, if I can't get it edited and it is a long video, um, just hit fast forward through these parts. You don't have to sit and watch all of this. You know what I mean? So I did get a little bit of paint here. I'm not stressing over it though. When that happens, you just go back in with another color and go back over it and it goes away. See how easy that is? Okay. Then... Um, I'm going to go back in because her dress is pink. We're going to go back in with some pink in her, uh, hair. But before I do that, I'm going to use some yellow and get that hair up here. I'm going to do blonde. Um, just kind of fill it in. This is not the shade of blonde I was wanting, but this is the shade of blonde we got because I just don't want to have to walk away. This webcam, unfortunately, I can't pause it, which tells me I'm going to have to purchase another webcam because I don't like that I can't pause it when I'm recording. I don't like that. So that's temporary for sure. Get it all painted in. Um, fill in her hair here. I guess this is what you guys would call an applique. I just make my own. Not applique in the fabric sense, but like an applique like for Mod Podge. And I don't know. Sometimes I just come up with my own little uh, definitions here. Okay, so then you go back in with your pink. I never really measure how much paint I'm going to use. I just kind of go with it. Fill in your flower. Okay. All right, so I've got her done and she's trying to stick to me, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm going to set her aside, and the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to have these cut out, 
I'm going to move on to part two. This might end up being a part one or part two or part three or four. And I don't like doing those, but I like to let you guys know what's up step by step. So um, I'm going to stop the video here. We're going to go back into part two and I will have this dry and I will have this cut out and we will have it ready to attach everything to the bottle. So I will be right back in part two. Thanks for watching, guys.